Hi all, Karthik here from Design School by WP Algorithm. In this video, I want to show you how you can add animations such as this one, this one, this one, or transforms such as skew, scale, rotate by using two free add ons for Elementor without writing a single piece of code. If you see here, this is a translate animation. So the element's position is displaced from one place to another and it plays in a loop. You can totally control this. And if you see here, this particular heading is skewed. And when I select this, even the selection is skewed. These are called CSS transforms. And you can see this is a combination of CSS animation and also transform. So it scales and then it scales down. This is a combination of the scale transformation and animation. And if you look closely here, this one is rotated around two axes. So X axis and Y axis. These are all achievable using pure CSS and Elementor. You don't have to need any plugin for this. But in this video, I'll show you how you can achieve these effects without writing a single piece of code. I've already explained CSS animations CSS transitions and even these scale rotate skew transforms all by using pure CSS and Elementor. I'll leave links to everything in the description. In this video, let's see how we can achieve these effects. The first method is by using a plugin called Dynamic Animations for Elementor. So in WordPress repository, search for Dynamic Animations and it's this one by Dynamic.00. This is one of the coolest add-ons developing all things CSS and related to WordPress, especially related to Elementor. So you just install and activate this. This is a lightweight plugin. This plugin is built for CSS animations and transforms. So once you install and activate it, go to your Elementor page and you click on any widget and under advanced tab, you'll find something called dynamic. Now the method that I explained using pure CSS and Elementor is not limited to just widgets. You can apply them to the columns, to sections, basically any individual elements by targeting them with CSS. So it's kind of limited, but it's okay given that you don't have to write a single piece of code and this animations will work consistently across all browsers. If you're writing CSS code, you have to add proper prefixes to make them work consistently across browsers. So anyway, I'll just pick this image widget. I'll just click on this, go to advanced. I now see a field called dynamic. I'll just click on it. You can now turn on enable animations. The moment you enable animations, you can see two buttons. One is the play button. So which lets you preview the animation. You can pause the animation in the middle of a preview. So this is just for your reference, so just to see how these values play well. So once you change different values, you can play or pause the animation. So that's what these do. So the default animation is float animation. It basically moves the element up and down. Let's change that again. I'll play it. Since I've paused it, the animation didn't uh, play. Float will basically tra or uh, translate the element up and down. Let's change another one. Pass through. This one changes the position of the element across X axis. Transform origin, you can pick different values for this and based on that, it will apply various other functions. Iteration mode. So here you can make the animation infinite. So it will play forever. You don't want this because it will irritate users. You usually want the animation to play for maybe two to three times. Usually uh, if it's a subtle animation, it's fine. But if it's a normal animation or aggressive animation such as this one, you don't want to turn on infinite. Just make the count and keep the count to a bare minimum of two or three. Here you can set the duration of the animation. I've clearly explained all these in the CSS animations video, but because of the evolution of Elementor and its popularity, now all the options are just sliders and fields. It's really cool. You can here set the duration of animation so you can, it's the duration in seconds. You can also set an animation delay. Timing function usually controls the way in which your animation is performed. So ease in will start slow and end fast. 
ease out will start fast and end slow and there are various other functions direction so your animation changes values from one value to another right so if you pick the forward direction or the normal direction it would behave normally when you pick backward usually when you select load it moves first down and then up now if you change the direction to backward it will start moving in the opposite direction that's what it does alternate will shuffle between the forward and backward directions and alternate reverse is the reverse of alternate so alternate is like one forward motion and then one backward motion alternate back alternate reverse is like one backward motion and then one forward motion so combination of these you don't have to understand any of this because you can clearly see the animation in action you can just select the values and then play it change the different values i can see the preview in action and there's one more tip here in order to view the preview properly set the count to infinite and when you're done with animation and when you're about to use it on your page change it change the iteration mode to a normal number and enter a number such as 2 or 3 while previewing just turn this toggle on so that you can continuously view how the animation performs so if i select forward direction this is how the animation works if i select backward direction it moves in the opposite direction let's select alternate forward backward backward and forward and this does the opposite first backward and then forward you can see, pretty much see fill mode will effectively change the state of the element after the animation you don't have to understand this either if you select none once the animation is done element returns to its normal state which is in this particular column if you select backwards it will move to the last state or the first state returns to the first state forward will ret make the element return to its last state anyway you don't have to understand any of this since you can preview the animation over here and this is clearly visible when you have an iteration in number instead of infinite so let's pick float and let's see what happens when i select the fill mode to both you can see that the element is originally displaced from its original position because of the values that we have selected and backwards would move the element from its position to its original state forward will also do the same if you select none it's just the same as if the animation didn't occur so you don't have to understand any of this just play with the values and see how the element returns to its original state after selecting all these values you can of course play and pause these values and you can apply this to any widget and remember it's limited to just widget you cannot apply these on columns or section and it's really cool timing function again the way in which animation is applied direction how the animation should move forward will actually uh, won't break the flow of the animation backward or reverse will would reverse the flow of the animation then other two values combinations of these fill mode what should happen to the element after the animation is done so you can play with different values and you can finally see where that would take your normal element so i'll pick this heading here i'll click dynamic i'll enable the animation now i'll just uh, select this grow animation i'll change the iteration count to 3 I'll change the duration to maybe 3 seconds. I'll change the timing function to ease. You can of course update the changes and preview it on your actual page. Let's scroll back. Once my preview loads, I can clearly see the animation in action. So I'm waiting for my preview to load and here's the text animation. So this is the final animation on my text. So the iteration count is 3. So it just happens 3 times and then the element returns to normal because of the settings that we chose here so fill mode we didn't choose forward or backward or both we just chose none so it's in its original position so that's how you add animations using this dynamic animations for elementor plugin there's other way to do this and there's another free plugin called happy add-ons this one is 
quite popular. It's recently launched and looks really promising. Just search for happy add-ons. I've been testing this plugin for various other reasons. There are a lot of tutorials on this add-on coming soon. So just search for happy add-ons, install and activate it. It's this one. So once you install and activate it again, within the advanced tab, you'll find something called happy effects. Unlike these dynamic animations, happy effects are subtle animations. So these are subtle changes and they also have a way to add transformations such as scale, skew and a lot more. So let's get started with the happy effects and the subtle animations that it offers. Also, if you have both the plugins installed, make sure you're using one of them to add animations. So I have the dynamic animations turned on and watch what happens if I try to choose translate. It would not still work because both the plugins are conflicting here. So you need to turn either one of them off and then use the other one. So I'll just choose floating effects by happy effects or the happy add-ons. I'll just click translate and instead of moving it aggressively, it just moves it slightly as if it doesn't move at all. You can click on this. So the left part, this is where you can choose where it should move from. And the right part is the final destination where it should move to. So that's along X axis or the horizontal axis. You can do the same for Y axis. So it's the vertical axis. So it should start from this value and it should reach this value horizontally. And at the same time, it should start from this value and reach this value vertically. And these animations are continuous. There's no way to limit them or have an iteration count on this. You can also pick the duration and delay for this. So that's for translate, which actually displaces the element or any widget. I'll disable this. Now for rotate, you can rotate around X axis, which is the horizontal axis around Y axis. Z axis is basically the axis facing towards you, the viewer. So you cannot actually uh, imagine the view axis. You should just think that it's an imaginary axis pointing towards you. I'll just add this uh, root scale animation to this one. So or this particular image. I'll just pick scale. And you can see the scale can be selected around along X and Y and the duration and delay. I'll just leave the default values as is. So the left one is from and the right toggle is to. And remember these effects are continuous animations. So they're infinite by default and there's no way to control them. If you want to have more control over them, you need to write CSS code for that. I'll leave links to those CSS transitions, animations and also transforms in the description. Make sure you check that out. So you can pick scale for this. And I can pick rotate for this. I'll just click on this image. I'll go to happy effects. Floating effects is turned on for this. I'll pick rotate. So you can pick the rotation around X axis. So it should start from minus 47 pixels and it should rotate to this. Again around Y axis. You, should, you can pick few values. So combination of both X, Y and Z axis. As well, if you don't want any rotation, you can remove the rotation around X or the Z axis. I'll also remove the rotation around Y axis. So now the element moves just around the X axis. So horizontally, you can see that the element moves up and down because it's rotating along the X axis. Since we've removed the rotation along Y and Z axis, you can change the duration from 10,000 to maybe 100. So the animation performs more aggressively. Set it to 10,000. The animation should always be subtle. Or maybe 1,000 to make it a bit more realistic. So just like that. And apart from animations, you also have something called transforms. So if you want to scale the element, translate the element, translate is like moving it or displacing it from its original position kind of like what custom positioning really is. So you may really never have to use this, but if you want to, you can translate it along X axis and also along Y axis. This is basically displacing the element from its normal position. You never would use this. Rotate, you might. You may have to maybe rotate text or something. So for that, you might use this. So I'll just pick 
CSS transform. I'll remove this Q. I'll click on rotate. I'll try to rotate it along Y axis. Y axis is the vertical axis and that's the reason why you can see that the element is being rotated along the vertical axis. So now you can see the mirror image of the element along Y axis. You can also set the value by entering the value in this field. I just want to rotate it along Z axis. So it's the axis facing towards you. It would not distort your element. Let's also skew the element a bit. Skew is like the perspective that you would see in Photoshop. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, it would add that perspective thing. You can also scale the element. So unlike animations, these are permanent changes. So you can click on this element, go to scale and you have to scale the element proportionally across X and Y else it would distort the element. So if you scale along X and Y equally, you'd get an element like this. You can also do negative scaling. And you can see what that does to the element. It would reverse the element. So those are the ways in which you can add subtle animations, CSS transforms without writing a single piece of code. It just works by using two free add-ons. The first one is the dynamic animations for Elementor and the second one is happy Elementor add-ons. And I just want to mention one more thing here. The dynamic animations for Elementor is a lightweight plugin built exactly for animations. On the other hand, happy add-ons are a bundle of add-ons and various special effects. If you're not really using the happy add-ons, you can go to the add-ons, click on widgets in the backend tab. And here within widgets, you can disable all the widgets and you'd still get access to the happy effects even if you disable all the widgets. That would reduce the load by these add-ons on your page. If you're not really using these widgets, you can simply disable them or enable the ones that you really want. And that's one tip that you should follow while using these. But if you want a complete control, if you want to make creative changes, you should obviously do CSS. They cannot pack everything into add-ons or plugins, right? And their CSS, they cannot pack it into these plugins. But what they do is really amazing given that their set of toggles and switches and drop downs and that's really cool. That's it for now. That's how you add animations without writing code. But by writing a little bit of CSS code, you can basically achieve anything and you're not limited to the animations uh, found in the happy effects add-on and the dynamic animations for Elementor. That's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, as usual, give it a thumbs up and I'll talk to you in the next video. But before that, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on any new updates. That's it. I'm Karthik from WP Algorithm. Talk to you in the next video. Peace.